Good morning. Welcome to Trinity Episcopal Church on this sixth Sunday of Easter. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray together our collect. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on poured out even on the Gentiles, for, for they heard them speaking tongues and extolling God. And then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 98, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm has he won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel, and all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King of the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it, the lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. A reading from the first letter of John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the spirit is the one that testifies, for the spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down his life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing but I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. All she had to her name was $13. And she walked over to the campsite of her friend, Jean, and gave her two of those precious dollars. Jean said right away, pushing the money back, I can't take this, Elsa. You have your two children to feed, and this has to last you to the end of the month. Take it, said Elsa. You have three children and a husband, and you're in no shape to pick cotton right now. You have shared your clothes and your shoes with me. You have shared your coffee and your friendship. It's my turn to share with you. This is an approximation of a conversation from a historical novel that I've just finished reading. It's called The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. It's wonderful, yet really heartbreaking. It's a story about a family living in the Dust Bowl in Texas in the 1930s. They, they made their exodus to California, and it's about their efforts of survival in both of those states. Jean and Elsa became good friends living in a squatter's camp by a ditch of dirty water in the San Joaquin Valley of California. It was really the best sort of friendship, despite all these difficulties. The women were open with each other about their struggles, and yet they also shared their hopes and dreams for each other. And it was an unlikely friendship. Any friendship would have been unlikely at that time and in that place. Everyone was just trying to survive, to eat, to work, and hopefully one day to have a little bit of money saved up. But every family camped there had to compete for a limited number of resources, food, shelter, limited number of jobs in picking crops. There was terrible weather and there was no sanitary facilities of any sort. It was truly a dog-eat-dog -dog world for these poor people. All they had was what they had carried with them from the Dust Bowl back in states where they came from, Oklahoma, or Texas, or other states as well. But for Jean and for Elsa, this was a saving relationship for them. And it wasn't a one-way street either. It wasn't one person solely taking care of another, a giver and a receiver. One was not in charge of the other, like a superior with an underling taking orders. Theirs was a true bond of mutuality. And in today's Gospel reading, this is the type of relationship that Jesus 
Jesus offers the disciples and us. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. In this portion of the Gospel of John, Jesus doesn't mean for the 12 to be his servants, simply just obeying the Lord. He means for them to be on his level, to be part of a holy fellowship of things shared, faith and prayer and hopes. Jesus asks the disciples to keep his commandments, to love one another, to love God, and to bear fruit. This makes it sound as though we are just to obey the orders of our God in Jesus Christ. But another element of friendship, and a very important one, is that we care about what our friends care about. Jesus tells the disciples that everything that God is, he has shared with them. And what God cares about? Love, justice, offering one's hand to another, gratitude, praise. These are the things that Jesus is passionate about. And if we are his friends, then we are too. Friendship is a two-way street, so Jesus cares about what we care about and what the disciples cared about. He joins them on the seashore as they practice their livelihood of fishing. He listens to those who are suffering, and he cares about what the sick and the suffering are going through. And all this takes time. We don't develop a friendship immediately. Like a tree that one plants this year in hope of a crop of apples in a few years, we don't expect immediate results. Building a structure takes time. Training our bodies for a long distance run, bike ride, or an athletic event in the Olympics takes patience and perseverance. And these are all characteristics of building a relationship especially a relationship that is of the utmost importance to us. Friends worship God together. Friends share meals together. We've been doing our best to maintain our relationships, both familial and that with our friends, on computers, tablets, and phones. It's been quite a while. But our friendships, as experienced on Zoom, are just not quite the same, are they? It's better than nothing. <laughs> but you can't hug. You can't see people's body language. There's just something about being with a person. I can't really put it into words well. Someone who's better at words than I am will be able to pinpoint what it is I, I, can't, I can't understand well enough to put down on paper. There's something about being in the same space together. Haven't we longed for a meal shared together in this past year? It's not just about food, is it? It's about being together. And that kind of helps us to understand the ineffable part <clears throat> of friendship. It's everything I've mentioned so far, and it's love. Agape love. That certainly is best transmitted in person. You may have experienced this. Say you have a friend from high school or from your hometown from years ago, <clears throat> and you wonder if you still have anything in common. And then, when you do meet again in person, it's like the relationship was there all along, and you take up the conversation sort of just where you left off years ago. The things that made you friends before are still there. The patterns of speech, the way you laugh, the things you both found interesting and important in your lives. 
Those are still things you share. I'm looking forward myself to seeing a friend I haven't seen in many years when I'm on my sabbatical this summer. And thanks be to God, and thanks be to scientists and physicians who are inspired and gifted. Things are opening back up in our country and in our community. We are beginning to see each other in person again. I've been invited back to the nursing homes in our area and will be leading services once again at Gear Nursing and Gear Village Lodge and Noble Horizons. Trinity Church is opening back up too. We've been having in-person services as well as our wonderful online services every week now. And on the Feast of Pentecost, May 23rd this year, we will finally share the Holy Eucharist together again. The last time we had Eucharist together was in February of 2020, 14 long months ago. I hope that if you live locally and are able, that you'll come to church to receive the sacrament, which we have been missing for so long. This is how we see Jesus in person now. We see the face of Jesus in the faces of our fellow parishioners and friends, and we meet Jesus in spirit face to face in the sacrament of the holy food that we share at the altar. What a friend we have in Jesus. Our service continues as we say together the Pascha Nostrum, Christ our Passover. Alleluia! Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia! Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. The Prayers of the People Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to you, Lord God, for all your blessings. We pray in gratitude for the celebration of our lives. Lift up in prayer all those things for which we are thankful. Lord, in your goodness, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours. On our parish council, on our parish cycle of prayer, we pray today for Alicia Trimble, Gary, and Allison Tripp, and Heidi Truax, and for all their families. Grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as God loves us. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Alex, Bill, Maxie, Harry, Cindy, Heather, Robert W., Mike, Marlene, Martha, Richard V., Carlos, Donna, Millie, Allie, Sam, Jeremy, Betsy H., Roberto, Alice Tweed, Michael B. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, Hector Cruz, all who have died from COVID-19. We pray that your will for them may be fulfilled and that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, hear the prayers of your people and what we have asked faithfully, grant them that we may obtain effectively to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Cantate, Domino.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you have created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out of the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of Blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join with the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout for joy. silent. You call a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from the bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your reign, and to give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you on, that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, the ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ, Grant that we, burning with the Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people into the joy of our true, eternal home. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise, 
Blessed are you, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, we believe that you are present in the sharing of the Holy Eucharist. We desire through this sacrament to receive you into our bodies, heart, mind, and soul. Since we cannot at this moment receive you physically through the bread and wine of this holy meal, we ask that you come spiritually into our hearts. We embrace you now as we unite ourselves to your presence. May we never be separated from your love. Amen. Please join me in praying our final prayer this morning. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gates of glory. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.
us go forth in the name of the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>